Hi, Norman with iSaveTractors.com. In this video, I'm going to be rebuilding a Delco Remy starter generator with our iSave Tractor starter rebuild kit. Enjoy the video. These starter generators were found in a wide variety of lawn and garden tractor equipment, ranging from Cub Cadets with Kohler engines, Bolins on Wisconsin engines, Briggs and Stratton engines on Simplicity tractors, and much more. Our iSave Tractor Starter Generator Rebuild Kit includes two carbon brushes, two springs, two bearings, and one bushing. Now, not all starter generators use two bearings. Some use one bearing and one bushing. That's why we include both a pair of bearings and a bushing to have you covered in case of this variation. To disassemble your starter generator, you simply remove these two long bolts that's holding everything together. You'll find them on the brush end of the starter generator. You just zip the two bolts out, and then everything will separate into four major components. You have the two caps. One cap is on the pulley side, and one cap is on the brush side. They come right out. And then the big long uh, generator housing, that's your field assembly. And then uh, to remove this cap, you just give it a tug. Don't forget this little uh, bushing spacer that's on the inside of the cap. Just set that aside for later. And these are the four major components of your starter generator. Next up, we're going to remove the dust cap at the brush end of the cap. You see me there? I just punch it out with a little punch. It's just this little cap that sits on the other side of the bearing. Uh, next, I'm just going to take that same punch and punch out the bearing itself. Uh, these usually come out really easy, as you can see that... Uh, grease that was once in this bearing is uh, long overdue to be replaced. So you just punch it out, uh, be gentle, and it'll come out super easy. Now give it a quick squirt of a carb cleaner or other solvent and just give it a quick rub down, clean off uh, all the old residual uh, carbon that have fallen off of the old uh, brushes. Just clean it up, make sure everything is as clean as possible before we move on to uh, putting the new bearing in. Before you put the new bearing in, you want to clean off that dust cap and then just tap it in from the outside of the cap. And I use a small plastic hammer just to gently tap it in. Just tap it in so the sides sit flush with the rest of the cap. And next, all you have to do is uh, put a little bit of oil on the outer race of that bearing and then just slip it into the slot. Now, these are sealed bearings, so you don't need to uh, add any further grease. Just a little lubricant right there and slip it in. It should go in pretty easy. If you have to, you can give it a little tap with a soft hammer. And that's all it takes. Now, the pulley end cap. That bearing is held in with this uh, little retainer here. It's just held in with three uh, slot-headed screws. Just remove those screws. There's a little uh, gasket in there. Ours is in good condition. We don't need to uh, do any replacement there. And if you had to replace it, you could cut a new one out with um, gasket material. And I'm just cleaning off uh, some of the old gunk that was in there. Now to remove this bearing, I just use my punch again and gently tap the bearing out. Uh, this one will come out just as easily as the other one, as you see. Just takes a few taps, out it comes. Now I'm going to use a little bit more solvent and just uh, clean up the rest of this cap and make sure everything is nice and clean to accept the new bearing. Now that everything is clean, I'm going to slip this bearing into its position just like I did with the other one. Just a little bit of lube, slide it in, and then... Uh, put that little gasket back in and then put that retainer back in, snug everything back up, and then I'm going to move on to the next step. Next, using a Scotch-Brite pad, I like to clean up the commutators and clean up the shafts where they ride on the inner races of the bearings. Just a gentle touch here, just to clean up any uh, uh, carbon residue or any rust that may have formed. Next, we're going to replace the brushes and the spring that holds the little tension clip for the brushes. The brushes are simply held on with one screw, so just remove that screw with a little flathead screwdriver, and the brush will come right out. To remove the spring, I'm going to try to get the camera nice and close so you can see. 
the bottom of the spring is hooked onto a little ledge. So you just want to take a small uh, hook like I have here and just pull that spring back and then bring it up over the top of the ledge. And when you do that, you'll be able to slide out this uh, tension arm and the spring at the same time, just like that. Now make note of how that spring came out because we're going to put it in uh, uh, the new one in a very similar way. I'm going to try to get this in focus for you. There is a little trick to putting this in here. So you want to put the spring so that top little spot is in the hole and then you want to put it in such a way where that hook on the bottom of the spring is not in a hole. That way we can reach and grab it with our little uh, hook tool in a moment. So when it, with the spring in that configuration, you slide it back onto the little rod. And now I'm going to take my little uh, hook pick and I'm going to hook that spring, that bottom little hook spring, for lack of better words. And I'm going to uh, pull it out and use my finger to help it. I'm going to pull it out and then I'm going to clip it onto that ledge that's on the opposite side of the little spring. You repeat the process with the other side, and when you're finished, it kind of looks like this. To put the brushes in place, you want to put it so the brush, the kind of angled part, is the part that's riding on the commutator. And when you put the brushes in, you just slide it into their little slots, and if you push it all the way back, it almost clicks into place. That way you can slide your rotor through the starter generator, and when the commutator is up to the level of the brushes, you can kind of wiggle the brush and the little uh, spring clip there so everything kind of gains tension and falls into place just like that. And when done correctly, this is what it should look like. Notice how the angled part of the brushes, the carbon brushes, are kind of riding right along the commutator there. That's the correct way to install the brushes. Make sure they're not sideways or upside down. To reassemble everything, first make note of that a little alignment notch in the field housing and then the alignment hole in the pulley side cap. You want to insert this cap in such a way where that uh, alignment mark and that alignment hole line up. You just slide it on, rotate it around until you feel the notch click into the hole, and that's it. Then rotate the starter generator around and make note there's a little alignment cutout right there in the field housing. And then there's a little uh, dot on the outside of this uh, cap. When you assemble this, you want to make sure those two are lined up. Now you simply slide the cap uh, over the shaft. Uh, sometimes it might require just a little gentle tapping with a plastic hammer, but it should go in pretty easily. Once you get that in and you line up those marks, you're able to uh, thread those uh, bolts all the way through the housing and they'll thread into the threaded holes on the cap on the opposite side. Sometimes aligning those bolts can be a little tricky, so what you can do is you can turn the generator around, shine a flashlight into the threaded hole side, and kind of watch as you align the end of the bolt. And once you get it in, you can uh, zip it in uh, like that. Well, there you have it. That's how you rebuild your Delco Remy starter generator on your old antique or vintage garden tractor. For high-quality aftermarket parts like the brush kit I used in this video, please visit our website, isavetractors.com. My name is Norman. Thanks for watching.